Hello, and welcome to Asian Pulse. I'm your host, Shannon Permal. We are broadcasting from the traditional unceded territories of the Kwatlin, Silvertooth, and Squamish Nation. Keep an eye on your elderly parents, neighbors, and people living alone, as this heat has been getting very hot and very unbearable for some. Happy Krishna Janmashmi, which will start on August 12th and goes on until August 19th. This is a celebration for the birth of Lord Krishna. And on behalf of our team here at Asian Pulse, we wish you all a happy Krishna Janmashmi. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages. For astrology service, life, horoscope, and fortune telling, marriage problem, love problem, divorce problem, money problem, personal or business, all types of puja and havan. Call Pandit Lakshmi Nath Guruji, 1-604-849-4872, serving Alberta and BC. Arvind's Korean Cocktail, Indian Cuisine. They do catering for all occasions and they do free delivery. Please call 604-515-1070. Address is 420 6th Street, New Westminster. Open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. For deliveries, call 604-515-1070 or arvinskari.com. Thank you, sponsors. And if you'd like to highlight your business on this show, please email it to us at asianpulse at gmail.com. Now we have Zahara Asmal, who is an ED of Vintage Point. Previously, she was an ED of South Neighborhood House in Vancouver. So please have a look. Hello and welcome to Asian Pulse. Thank you everybody for watching the show and giving us the feedback. We always try to bring the guest on the show that you can learn something or you may be able to follow and find out the work that they have done in the community. And my guest today is a very, very old friend of mine. I have known her since 2004 when we went to India together with Hope International to do some volunteer work to do picking up ground nuts at Kerala. And that's when I first met her. And that time, my friend, Zara, Smile was in university, and now she's sitting right across from me. And about 15, 20 years later, I'm going to talk to her and see what she has done during that time and the work she is still doing in the community. So welcome, Zara. Thank you, Camilla. It's really nice to see you again. Yeah, and so nice to see you because every time I see you on the Facebook pages or our you know, Instagram or LinkedIn, I think of you, I said, oh, I remember that we went to India together and had such a wonderful time. Oh. And, and that was about 14 days or whatever, but what a great opportunity for us to be doing that kind of volunteer work, right? Absolutely, and it really influenced my whole career. Right. Um, it had a huge impact on my life, for sure. Yeah. So talk, let's go back and talk about that you are also saying that you lived in Toronto for five years. Mm -hmm. So what were you doing in Toronto while you were in Toronto? Sure, so I can share a little bit just about my whole career. Yeah, yes, um, yes. Maybe. I started off, um, when I finished university, I knew I wanted to work in the not-for-profit sector. Part of that was because of our trip with Hope International <laughs> yeah. and that opportunity to learn about how um, not-for-profit organizations were transforming communities in India. Um, so I really wanted to focus on international development. Mm -hmm. um, I went on to do an internship, in, uh, it's actually called the Aga Khan Fellowship in International Development Management, so it took me back to India. Yes. I spent eight months living in Jaipur okay. and uh, working with an organization called Aravali, doing some field work and I learned so much about community development. Uh, from there I went to Bangladesh and did an internship with um, BRAC, which mm -hmm. is the largest 
not-for-profit organization in the world and they mm -hmm. do a lot of microfinance programming mm -hmm. and then they sent me to Haiti um, so I lived in Haiti for a year and a half one year working with BRAC Haiti and then another year working with an Irish organization called Haven uh, doing a lot of housing and livelihood projects um, after that my husband and I wanted to return to Canada so we moved to Toronto and mm. I worked for one and a half years with Street Kids International, mm -hmm. managing projects in five different countries overseas. Um, I visited Sierra Leone many times, Ethiopia, the Philippines, Colombia, and India. And World then, traveler, my uh, yeah, goodness. Yeah, it yes. was really, it was like a master class <laughs> yes. in just the world and yeah. sort of how different communities deal with um, challenges of poverty or um, women's rights and healthcare and so many different topics. Um, but all of that work made me realize I really wanted to give back at home and be more part of my own community. Mm -hmm. um, so then I got a job at Eva's Initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, working as the general manager of Eva's Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And Eva's is a transitional shelter for homeless and at-risk youth. Okay. So there's 50 youth um, from the ages of 16 to 24 who live at Eva's Phoenix. And they can stay with Eva's for up to a year and they learn life skills, get employment training, and they really learn what they need to in order to be able to transition out of homelessness and into independent living, oh. hopefully forever and never oh. to return to homelessness. So, you know, it was very challenging, um, but yeah, that's what took me to Toronto and it's where my um, family lived when my daughter was born. Okay. So, and she's seven and a half now. Wow. So it's been a while. <laughs> And then what makes you, what brought you back to Vancouver? Your family, your mom? <laughs> yeah, well, my mom is here, my yes. sisters are here, but actually when I was on maternity leave with my daughter, my father had a fall, he hit oh. his head, okay. he lived alone. Um, he did, he, you know, he, he was in intensive care, it was very scary. Um, I was able to come home and be with him because I was on mat leave. So with my little daughter strapped onto my chest, I used to visit him in the hospital. And uh, he did pull through and he was able to recover. But it made us realize just, you know, How life is important. precious, life is short. And I didn't want to be on the other side of the country. And I luckily had the luxury of being able to find a job in Vancouver. So that's what brought us home. And my husband's um, mother and his brother, one of his brothers, is also in Vancouver. So it just made sense to come back home. Wow. Yes. So when you came back, so what did you, where did you start then in Vancouver? Yeah, I got this amazing job um, with South Vancouver Neighborhood yes, House. Yes. I was the executive director there for mm -hmm. five and a half years. And um, South Vancouver is a neighborhood in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. It's actually about a sixth of the population of the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And 80% of the people who live there are people of color like us. Oh, yes. A um, lot of different languages, a lot of people from different backgrounds. And um, so we were able to do some awesome programming for newcomers, for seniors, for youth. Um, there were childcare programs, a lot of community development work. Mm -hmm. In the last few years I was there and under the leadership of some of my team members, there were some awesome connections made with um, indigenous people who live in the community mm -hmm. and some really beautiful partnerships that were coming to be. Um, we opened up a new childcare center recently, not we, I don't work there anymore, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it'll always be in yeah, my heart. Yeah, so. I know. Yeah, and we were advocating for a community health center and opened up a food distribution center in the early days of COVID um, because food security and access to food is a big issue in the South Vancouver area. Mm -hmm. um, also, while I was there, I was given the opportunity to open up the Marple Neighborhood House, which is at Hudson and West yes, 70th yes. at the old fire station or mm -hmm. fire hall. Mm -hmm. So. That was a huge project. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting to run a well-established organization yes. and then a brand new startup. Yes. So um, yeah, it was quite. It was quite a great learning opportunity. My mm. goodness, you were a go-getter. <laughs> Everywhere I go, you wherever you, you leave a mark behind. And I know why, while you were there at the South Vancouver neighborhood house, and I said, there's a woman of color there because that's like you say, it's a very diverse, lot of South Asian. Yeah community live there so yeah so you did excellent work in there and I started another neighborhood house which wasn't very well recognized in a, it's a different part of the city too right? yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and it was a challenge because we opened up the doors of Marple neighborhood house and a few months later COVID made us close the doors oh. um, so you know all of the ambitions and hopes about getting people into the building and right. really animating the space and bringing so much life and energy um, had to be put on pause because of COVID. 
but there's a wonderful new executive director at both South Van Neighborhood House and Marple Neighborhood House, and I know that both of them are continuing on with awesome work. Marple's starting to really pick up some momentum, and yes. South Van, the team there is phenomenal, and they continue to improve the programming for the community and also fight for um, um, racial justice, yes. you know, in terms of uh, distribution of resources and whatnot across the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. so. Every time I pass on Victor Drive, I say, look, it's out in Gouverneur House. <laughs> it doesn't look like much from the no. outside, but if you go in, it's oh, just no, no. It's bursting beautiful. at the seams. Yeah. It's beautiful inside. <laughs> I have been inside, too. Yeah. It's just outside when I'm, because this before that is a light. So sometimes yes. you stop there yeah. and I just look around. So, and then you left that position, and very recently you started Vintage Point. Yes. Yeah, it's a different kind of an organization altogether. Absolutely. Not kind of a hands-on, but uh, just more like management kind of. Yeah, and it was a big change for me. All of my roles up until yeah. this point in my career have all been sort of working at frontline organizations yes. that directly work with the community. Vantage Point is a not-for-profit organization that supports the development of other not-for-profit organizations across BC. Mm -hmm. So it is a provincial organization. We provide uh, training and workshops mm -hmm. on um, governance, which is a really big, important topic. You know, that's about how board of directors work with staff and organizations and really just how leadership of organizations works, uh -huh. whose responsibility is whose. Um, governance can be a very, very big and interesting topic and there's a lot of new conversations about different models of governance uh, to sort of flatten power structures and things. So governance training is a big piece of what we do at Vantage Point. Uh -huh. Also leadership training, HR training and training on planning. Uh -huh. We also do a little bit of support on uh, financial uh, or funding development. Uh -huh. We have a lab that's called Raising the Right Revenue uh -huh. um, because that's again a, a topic that a lot of organizations uh, can struggle with. Um, so that's one arm of what we do and then the other side of our consulting or our work is our consulting practice uh -huh. where we have um, skilled volunteers, we call them knowledge philanthropists and also a few staff members and they will work with not-for-profit organizations who approach us across BC on developing their own strategic plans mm -hmm. and doing other sorts of um, more in-depth organizational planning. Mm -hmm. uh, we also support with recruitment of senior staff, like executive directors and um, okay. ED assessments as well. Um, so it's, you know, we pay attention to where organizations might be struggling a little bit to ha build capacity and we try to address those areas. Um, and we also try to bring organizations together for peer learning mm -hmm. and so that we're not all working individually in silos, yes. but we're really trying to collaborate more and share knowledge and grow stronger as a sector together. Oh, that's a really nice concept. Yeah. Because I think there are some, they got, there are some of the not-for-profit organization, they have been an organization for a while and they are very well established among the funders and all that and they write grants and things like that. But there are some new ones, even though concept is so great and that kind of organization are needed, but uh, just because they don't have a very strong foundation or directors to advocate for funding and all that, so they only have one or two staff or part-time staff. Yeah. So sometimes they always, when there is not enough money to be paying the staff mm -hmm. and uh, people that work for you, it's always a struggle. And I also found that non-for-profit organization, we will all fight for the same dollars. Yes, absolutely. Right? We, because it's not like there's a lot more coming in the budget every year, so there is a lot more money available for non-for-profits every year. Um, the money stays the same, same, but we have to fight for that dollars to be able to retain level of service that we provide. Absolutely. It's, um, you know, in, in many ways I'd say that other sectors that do good work in community, whether it's the business sector or, um, you know, small business or uh, child care, not mm -hmm. child care, uh, education, there's a lot of sectors that are well respected and well recognized. Mm -hmm. The not-for-profit sector exists in every single community across BC, arts, sports, community welfare, food, there's so many different topics that we support. 
but um, often we're not recognized as much as we could be. Uh -huh. And I think that part of that comes from the fact that we don't have the stability um, in our funding. And so a lot of organizations are advocating for more uh, stability in the funding so that we can be stronger and then we can be consistent. Uh -huh. The community will know how to rely on us because things will not change um, you know, on a whim. Uh -huh and um, we'll be able to spend more of our time and energy doing the yeah. good work we want to do rather than stressing about how to pay for the staff that we have. And I think another thing that Vantage Point really tries to focus on is, is partnerships and collaboration. Um, and part of you know, the importance of having a good and very clear strategic plan is because we tend to work from grant to grant to grant, if we're not very clear about our purpose, um, there can be a tendency to want to chase dollars that are out there, but it might not actually be, we might not, like one organization might not be the best suited to do that type of work. Uh -huh. um, so I'm basically describing mission drift. Uh -huh. And we don't, if we don't want, if we want to be able to be strong in the work that we're created to do, um, having a clear strategic plan can help us really make those decisions about what funding to pursue and what funding to let go of or when we should be working in partnership so that maybe we do one piece of something and another partner does another piece uh -huh. and then we're not stepping on each other's toes very as much you know so this is it's very exciting to me I think um, you know to some people who aren't working in the yeah exactly. in the details and the nitty-gritty of nonprofits it might sound a little dry but it, it really isn't it's quite exciting and uh, for me it feels very meaningful to be at an organization that can kind of focus on trying to lift the nonprofit sector in terms of the way that we're able to work it, it feels yeah. very fulfilling so. and support them as well yeah. because there's certain organization like you say I you are not doing the frontline work anymore That's and right. you're missing it but then the other other work need to be done as with the same time yeah. And not everybody has that kind of expertise to be doing that backroom job or, you know, doing that job. And there are a lot of people, they do great work as a front line. And because if we take that away from the front line, then you are not providing the service. You are taking the resources away and yeah. writing one grant after another grant after another grant. And when you get rejection all the time, you just yeah. say, you wasted so much time yeah. I mean, you know, nothing came out of it because grant writing is art by itself. It is. Because it only is. certain people can write good grant and be able to get the money. And at the same time, I think you need to have a very strong focus where the money is going to go because yeah. you have to be accountable and transparent to your funder as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's actually, it takes a lot of skill to run a nonprofit well. Yes. And, um, you know, I think... Uh, just kudos to all of the organizations and the leaders of the organizations and all of the staff of all the nonprofits across BC who work so hard every day to give us the full, complete, healthy communities that we get to experience. And I think uh, there are a lot of refugees are coming at the moment, and they need a lot of support too. Settlement, integration, language, child care, housing, you name it. So there are more and more people coming that we need to accommodate. And I think we need to have a very strong foundation Absolutely. to be able to support everybody. So Vintage Point is where you are right now. And yes. yeah, you explained to me it's more like not doing the frontline work, but uh, trying to build the other non-for-profits stronger work in partnership and mm -hmm. see where they are and what's their vision and what they want to see in 10 years and things like that. What about yourself? I know you've been on the go, go, go yourself. <laughs> what do you see yourself doing? Um, so, I, I'm, I mean, my career has been very uh, interesting yes. and I haven't had a plan, you yes. know, that I followed. My, um, yeah, you know, my mom really wanted us to be doctors and lawyers and I definitely <laughs> took a different path and yes. it's been a little bit having to ebb and flow with the opportunities that came up. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm very happy where I am and I think I'll be at, I just joined Vantage Point in December, so yes, I'll be at Vantage Point for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really enjoy this being back in Vancouver. I'm able to spend, my daughter's seven, so I'm able to spend a lot of time with her. Um, we just got back from a 10 day trip in Vancouver Island and yes. had an absolutely wonderful time. Um, you know, we play a lot of board games. We 
just do a lot of fun dancing and things together. <laughs> so I really want to be able to enjoy the next few years with her mm -hmm. while she still is very interested in hanging out with her mom. I yeah. know that'll change at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it will take a while because she's only seven. Yes, yes. Yeah. So and it will depend what kind of relationship you have made with your children already when they are young. Yes. You know, that is so important, and I find there are so many moms because they do have to get out of the house and they have more than one child, and everybody, they have to divide their attention to all of them. Lucky you have one so far. Yes, but, um, one and done. That's, that's our plan. <laughs> that's our plan. <laughs> yeah, our so, anyways, <laughs> so you're, I mean, she's getting you're both undivided attention yes. and love care and everything. Yes. So I think she would be fine, but I also know the moms that they can give that much time. And when they grow a little bit older, then that connection is not there, like mom between mom yeah. and the children, yeah. which is very really sad. You know, your mom is your mom, but your mom is also your best friend. Yes. You cannot, yeah. you can go and tell her Anything and everything. Absolutely. My mom lives in New West, and I, I talk to her just about every day. Yes. Um, and it's a very special relationship, you know. Yeah. So I do hope that I get to have something similar with my daughter as she grows. Her, her name is Syra. She's yeah. a very spirited Syra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, you know, some of my extra time, I was taking a hip-hop class, which okay. I loved okay. at The Happening. Um, there, it's on pause right now. So, But I'm trying to, you know, stay active, and um, I've joined a couple of boards and a few different committees so I'm the chair of the Poverty Reduction Advisory Committee oh, that nice. works with the yeah. province to advise on um, policy developments related to poverty reduction which is very meaningful I just became the chair um, earlier this year so I'm still learning what that role means mm -hmm. uh, but very excited about that and I'm um, on the board of the Lookout Foundation mm -hmm. from my work with Eva's on yeah. working with homeless youth. Lookout does incredible work around housing and um, health mm -hmm. um, for um, vulnerable populations so working with Lookout Foundation is really meaningful and I just recently I knew when I left the neighborhood houses it would be hard not to have that frontline kind of connection mm -hmm. so I recently joined the board of Fresh Roots um, urban housing, urban farm society, sorry, um, fresh roots, and I'm really enjoying that. You mean fresh roots, like yeah. vegetables? Yeah. Okay. So they have a number of different farms that they run, and it's a lot of focus on um, teaching children about farming and sustainability, and uh, they have leadership programs for uh, youth as well. And they actually sell some of the produce that's grown at markets, and um, it's really, it's really a very cool organization, so I'd encourage anybody to look it up. And um, and if you need to volunteer or maybe join, yeah, and is all organic probably too. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And they teach because the, the summers are here in Vancouver or in Western Canada. The summers are only three, four months long, and yeah. there is so much can be done. But we have very nice weather, and that's why when everybody says there are a lot of people moving to BC. There are a lot of people moving everywhere in the country. Yeah. Thank you, Zara. Have your pen and paper ready now, as we have some announcements and events that you might be interested in participating in. The Canada slash USA ex Kelsa reunion students is taking place at Bollywood Banquet Hall in Surrey on October 1st at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 604-537-5123 or email umagrant02 at yahoo.ca. The tickets for this event is $40 per person and all proceeds for, from the function will go to Khalsa College in Ba, Fiji Island. Pick Society is celebrating its 35th anniversary on September 16th at 6 p.m. at Reflections Banquet and Conference Centre in Surrey. All proceeds from this event will be going towards Guru Nanak Diversity Village. So for more information or tickets, feel free to call PIX at 604-596-7722. The Cloverdale District Chambers of Commerce is organizing Surrey Hospice, an annual golf on September 14th at Northview Golf Club. This event allows sponsors and supporters to come together for a great round of golf and first class dinner. For more information, you can contact Ann Robinson at 604-574-9802. Car Rally and Walk for Drug and Gang Free Surrey is taking place on August 18th from 9 a.m. from Pick's office to City Hall. 11 a.m. is the rally, which will be at Surrey City Hall, and after that, they will be moving along to Holland Park, where they will have guest speakers, education, and activities. 
For more info, please contact events at pics.bc.ca or call at 604-596-7722. Sahas Community Service Society provides a helpline for people who are in crisis and need, in need of, to talk to someone. They offer critical support, information, and resources for individuals and families in need. The number is 604-900-9221. Everything will be kept confidential. Moving along, the Canadian Federation of Fiji Organizations is hosting their second annual Community Awards Gala on Sunday, October 16th at Kanda Banquet Hall in Surrey. Nominations are open for the Community Leader Award, Organization Leader Award, Innovative Business Award, Youth Volunteer Service Award, Wedding Anniversary Awards, and Centenarian Awards. Deadline is August 34th, 31st, so for more information or applications, you can visit cfofo.ca or contact me, Shannon Pramal, at 778-709-2853, or you can give us an email at info.cfofo at gmail.com. If you have any events coming up in your community and would like us to promote it, please send it to asianpulse at gmail.com. We ran out of time for today, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did bringing it to you. If you'd like to support our show by being a sponsor, you can contact Camilla Singh at 604-537-5123 or send an email to asianpulse at gmail.com. Before I go, I'll leave you here with these thoughts. If you want to see the brave, look to those who can return love. If you want to see heroic look to those who can forgive. Credit by the Bhagavad Gita. If you missed our show today, you can watch it again on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. on Channel 4 and Channel 10 if you're in Calgary. Thanks for spending a part of your day with us. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal. Stay safe and stay healthy and see you all next week. You can also watch all our shows by going on YouTube and searching for Asian Pulse TV. Until then, take care.